I'm Dominique Poncelet and I teach eighth grade. I joined Open Syed as a pilot teacher in 2018 and I've been using it in my classroom for the last four years, um, even through COVID and shifts to virtual instruction. Hi, my name is Tommy Clayton. I teach in New Jersey at a middle school in Berkeley Heights. I teach eighth grade science. Uh, I've been using the Open Syed system for about five years now. My name is Lauren Pisanic. I am a sixth grade science teacher in New Jersey, and I was a field test teacher for Open Syed. We've been using Open Syed materials in our classroom for the past four years now. So our middle school follows a traditional grading approach with numerical grades. We have four marking periods that are approximately nine to 10 weeks each. We have an online grade portal, so grades are accessible to students and families at all times. And in our school, we have quite a bit of autonomy about our grade book decisions, but there's definitely some unwritten expectations uh, to both have a variety of assessment types and also to clearly communicate to families how students are being assessed. So at my middle school, we have a traditional grading system. Uh, teachers can choose between um, weighted grading or uh, total points. Uh, in my case, we do total points. Um, we vary the assignments uh, depending on their rigor. Uh, something might be worth 20 points or 40 points, uh, depending on what the assignment is. Uh, we are encouraged to have uh, one meaningful grade a week. Um, and we have uh, four quarters throughout the school year, so we typically strive to have 10 meaningful grades in a marking period. Um, meaningful uh, typically involves some type of rubric, uh, feedback is given, um, and would not be a completion grade. I've been very fortunate to have a principal and a team of teachers who want to work to have equitable grading. So we do have semester-long grades and the ABCDF scale, um, but otherwise we were able to work as a team, a department, to come up with structures that we felt were equitable for students. And what ended up happening was a lot of other departments uh, in my school site decided to kind of use the same thing that we were doing. Uh, one structure that I hear a lot is a required two grades a week, and I heard that in my district too, uh, but I couldn't find any actual evidence of it. I tried to search in our handbooks and policy manuals, but there was no written policy. So I was really stuck with thinking about what's the intent of this two grades a week. And it's really to like give students an opportunity to show growth. So I feel with our system of revise and resubmit, that I'm honoring a policy that says we want students to be able to show growth by putting frequent grades in the grade book, um, even if I'm not required to put two grades a week. One thing that our team thought a lot about was grading is meant to communicate and it communicates to parents and to students and to other teachers and to administrators. And so we thought long and hard about how can we make grading an effective communication tool and also a tool that communicates an opportunity for growth. One question I know every teacher out there, I know every teacher has heard is like, how can I raise my grade? Um, what can I do to raise my grade? And, you know, the answer in my classroom is always the same. It's like, you have to look at your science performances. How do you raise your grade? You improve your science performance. Um, and so that means like, did you look at the feedback? Did you make revisions? Did you resubmit? Did you do any practicing? Um, so how can I raise my grade is a very desperate question from students. And in my class, the answer has turned into, it's always the same. What's your science performance? Have you revised and resubmit? Did you look at feedback? 